Last week's been a really big week. It seems like the topic that we've been talking about, that we've been waiting for, that we've been watching for the last, feels like six months of 2023 has finally happened. Bitcoin ETFs have finally been approved on the US stock market. Hey all, welcome back to another CEO and Lobster. This is the first one of 2024. Last week's been a really big week. It seems like the topic that we've been talking about, that we've been waiting for, that we've been watching for the last, feels like six months of 2023 has finally happened. Bitcoin ETFs have finally been approved on the US stock market. So we're gonna talk a bit, a bit about that today, what happened, why not as much happened as people were kind of hoping for and yeah dive into what comes next what's the next thing on the horizon what does this mean for bitcoin what does this mean for crypto in general and what does it mean for you exactly exactly so we'll start off with a little bit of a recap a little bit of uh covering what happened last week last week was quite an eventful week it started out last week with hype building because there was a couple of deadlines running out essentially the sec the security and exchange commissions last dates where they had to either come up with a really good reason to say no or they had to let this pass. As we led up to there, a couple of interesting things happened. First and foremost, the SEC's Twitter account was hacked. There was a post that was published. Whether it was hacked or not, it was a very professional post. Just I have to say though, if I were going to hack the SEC Twitter account and like, in my mind, like kudos to the person who did that because they would have been sitting on those credentials for who knows how long, days, weeks, months even, just waiting for the right timing. And we were all waiting for the SEC announcement, right? So for the person to leave it that late, like that's an extreme patience. If I were hacking the SEC account, I would have done a very professionally worded tweet as well. Cause it's no point playing your hand by writing Dogecoin ETF approved meme lol. You know, everyone will know that's a hack. So if you want to game the market and profit, which is the main reason people hack Twitter accounts is to profit on the market action that happens afterwards, keep it professional, keep it classy. But like you say, Patrick, the timing was interesting. The SEC having their Twitter X account hat, interesting. Was it a hack or was it someone accidentally fat fingered the release too soon? Who knows? Yeah, well, that's kind of one of the going hypotheses is it's a little bit too good to be true, especially because straight afterwards, we did see one of the documents related to the approvals get leaked a little bit too early, kind of tipping their hand that this was coming, which was really interesting. So there's been some speculation that while the SEC, who did not want this Bitcoin ETF to go through, they just ran out of legal options to stop it, might have accidentally posted something a little bit too early. They might have not scheduled a post correctly. Gary Gensler then had to respond on his personal Twitter account that the SEC account was hacked. This led to wild market fluctuations. And I believe this was only Tuesday. From then, we saw some documents yet get leaked that kind of broadly said that, yes, these exchanges are getting ready to list Bitcoin, some stock exchanges getting ready to list it. Then finally, the 11th, it happened. All 11 were approved in one fell swoop and Bitcoin ETFs went live. This thing that we've been waiting for for three months. But then what happened, Janine? What happened with the price action? This was really interesting, although somewhat predictable, I think. Um, the, the price actually peaked before the ETF announcement came out. So, you know, really driven by the speculation, by that announcement being so imminent and so, I guess, guaranteed that it moved the price before it happened and the impact of the ETF announcement itself was actually not very significant not in terms of market upward trends what we did see though which you know highly expected is with the buy the rumor sell the news this is the worst kept rumor and the worst kept secret in, in crypto so a lot of people were buying beforehand in the lead up to the ETF so we've seen a lot of this in our customer base of people going hey I'm wanting to get into Bitcoin or get into crypto more broadly because of the upcoming ETF announcement so huge amount of people buying and then wanting to sell at what you know what they think would be the peak of the ETF value and there's two places that the ETF is really going to affect values it's at the announcement when the markets go oh great this legitimizes it or it's long term and the long term value driver should be stronger because that's where the demand side is coming in of more of these funds these you know hundreds of millions of people being able to buy into cryptocurrency through a managed fund solution but that is not going to happen on day one. That's going to happen over the next one to two to three years. And so I think there was a lot of sell pressure on the day from people who are hoping to cash in on that quick win. And the buy pressure, the demand side, that's going to be a long time coming. So we won't actually see the impact of that for a while. I think the, the sell pressure on the day might actually make it less attractive to people to put this on 
their portfolio because the returns aren't as good. So it could be a little bit of a you know negative enforcement for the industry. But I think long term it, it should come back all right. A question for you, Janine, then. So why would somebody invest in a Bitcoin ETF? Why does this open the door to a whole bunch of new customers when easy crypto customers have been able to buy Bitcoin since, what, 2017? What's the new kind of thing here? It's a great question, Patrick, and I feel like we might have covered it on this uh, show before. But in a nutshell, at the moment, for anyone in the world to buy crypto, they're buying it directly. So you have to buy the Bitcoin, you're either holding it on the exchange, you know, with a custodial provider or you're holding it in your own wallet. You're also managing all of your own tax implications, your admin, your custody. With the ETFs, that puts Bitcoin inside a managed fund product. Like think of your KiwiSaver or your superannuation and the types of funds that those buy into. That's the kind of product that will now hold or can offer you cryptocurrency. So these are American-based ETFs, exchange-traded funds. So America's got a good couple of hundred million people in it, plus all the people worldwide that can access those same products. Here in New Zealand, we can buy American ETFs through our financial product providers. So there's a huge amount of people that can now buy into Bitcoin through a managed fund where they don't have to manage their own custody or their own tax implications of that. It's all kind of taken care of. And I think this will be a huge trend for where crypto is headed, is that people have heard about it, they know about it, but they might not necessarily want to learn how to do it themselves. They might not want to invest a huge amount in it, but that idea of diversifying, you know, financial wealth management is all about diversification and looking at your risk and reward profile. So to have some, you know, low risk assets like term deposits, cash, some medium risk assets like property, and then some higher risk assets like venture stocks or cryptocurrencies, that's probably going to become more commonplace in people's financial portfolio and ETFs just make that so much simpler and easier. Yeah, I think there's a huge piece to say to the legitimization of this towards the traditional finance world that we've taken something that we're all used to, but it actually now does coexist in that financial world. I think this is the first step between bridging the crypto space and the traditional finance space in quite a significant way, if that kind of makes sense. They're now one and the same. Should we do a quick fire on some of the other takeouts, some other interesting things that we've seen off the back of this one, Patrick? The first one I think we should jump into is Grayscale. Grayscale have kind of had a Bitcoin trust product, which wasn't an ETF. It was very complicated in terms of how it was structured. You couldn't actually cash out on it. We've spoken a bit about it previously, but now they've actually been able to turn the tens of thousands of Bitcoins that they hold into like the ETF structure, being able to actually directly link that on the stock market. So they started with this massive head start. The issue being is they started at the top. There wasn't really anywhere for them to go. All of their people had already invested there, but previously couldn't cash out. And now that it's an ETF, they can quite easily and effectively cash out without having to pay essentially this like penalty that kind of existed through market conditions. So they've seen huge, huge outflows because of this ETF news. They've still captured a lot of fees. They're still going to, they're not going to go broke overnight. They've got $25 $25 billion in Bitcoin that they hold. So non insignificant amounts of Bitcoin. But yeah, unfortunately, it's come at a cost of unfortunately, they've lost some of their market cap, which has been a really, really interesting, not, not normally what you would think would happen in these situations. Yeah, they were very much the precursor to the ETF, the kind of like version, the MVP, minimum viable product version of it. So it's, it's interesting now we've moved into the proper managed fund products. The other thing that um, I found interesting out of this, and there's been, you know, you would have seen this on your crypto Twitter, um, Patrick, I'm sure a few people have been talking about it, is that we've had 11 different ETFs approved. And so these are ETFs from different fund managers. So different, you know, BlackRock's one, we've got... Fidelity, ARK Investor, Kathy Woods is there. But behind the scenes, those companies need to custody the Bitcoin that they're buying somewhere. And out of the 11 ETFs issued, nine of them are using Coinbase for custody. That feels to me like Coinbase is really the big winner out of the ETF announcement because they have got, you know, a massive amount more of, you know, if these things increase in value and increase in assets under management over time, Coinbase is holding all of that, making fees on that. Interestingly, I didn't see a big boom in Coinbase stock price off the back of that, but that to me would have been a, a rational thing for a logical market to do to see, hey, this should be priced into Coinbase's stock. But yeah, Coinbase is definitely a winner from the ETFs. Coinbase's stock price is actually a really interesting point because I don't think it's necessarily Coinbase itself or MicroStrategy because MicroStrategy is also a really interesting piece of this component. But we've seen a lot of other crypto companies' valuations decline. Their valuations have declined because people have been selling their stocks more than they're buying it. Because a lot of the incentives for people to invest in these companies hasn't actually been what these companies do, but it was more to gain exposure through creative ways to the crypto space. And now that they don't need these creative ways, it's much simpler to move into these ETFs. So Adam Back 
really interesting guy to follow on Twitter if you haven't, did a really, really good write-up about how if you actually look at the flow of funds, it's not netted out quite exactly. It's not exactly balanced, but a large amount of the funds flowing into these ETFs are actually coming straight from other crypto companies that are publicly traded because people are looking to change up their strategies. They're looking to move away from riskier businesses because their ultimate goal was just to have exposure to the crypto market. And what better way to do that than by holding Bitcoin? Very interesting. Lots to unpack there out of the ETF. And I think it'll be a long time till we see the, you know, the real impact of it won't probably be known for months or possibly even years. But it's an awesome step forward. Like you said, Patrick, a legitimization of the industry, making it more commonplace, making it more comfortable for institutions and banks and corporates, as well as individuals to get behind. Positive step forward. And hopefully we can find something else to talk about next week that isn't ETFs. Yeah, let us know in the comments below if there's any topics you'd like us to talk about. We've got some content coming up about the wallet, about all the new features we're wanting to add. So yeah, anything you want us to talk about, please don't say ETFs. I think everyone here, including myself and Janine, are pretty done with ETFs. Uh, but yeah, till next time, thanks all for tuning in and thanks for watching. See you next time.